So that's a spectrum. Um, so if you've got one spectrum, why not have two um, or three or four? This this is the way that uh, we've, we've I'm going to be thinking about it, or I've been thinking about it in the last year or so, which is uh, the, a UI um, axis, and there's a web that's <laughs> next on, on, on the UI, and, and the application logic is so web first and native as well. So, and you can see that those apps that I've just shown you on the on the previous slide are uh, lie somewhere in that, uh, that square. So, I'm, I'm not going to be talking too much about web versus anything any, anymore. Okay, so before I start the next se section, who's, uh, who's developing this audience? Okay. Who, who's, who's not a developer? Okay, business people? <coughs> Hi. You're the one with the suits, right? <laughs> okay. So, in about December of last year, Orange, uh, is a big network operator in the UK, uh, came to us and said, hey, we sponsor the Glastonbury Music Festival, and we'd like to, you to build an app for us. Um, who, who, who's heard of the Glastonbury Music Festival? Okay. So, who has not yeah, everybody, okay. So, by most measures and most uh, records in the, in the Guinness Book, uh, Glastonbury Music Festival is the biggest music, outdoor music festival in the world. I'll give you some numbers. Uh, do you work in miles or kilometers? Okay, so square, 12 square kilometers of farmland. Uh, there's 140,000 people, and that goes on over a week. And there's uh, about 65 stages, and roughly 1,800 to 2,000 acts. So it goes on for between 10 in the morning and 6 o'clock in, in the morning. That's the same day. So, and it's in the middle of a field, or several fields, and there's, so there's no power. There's very little network coverage. And so we've been thinking of it in terms of hostile terrain. So you know, this is what mobile is meant for. So the consequences of that, are that, oh, I meant to say, the client, Orange, said that they wanted the users to love them because of this app. So the user experience was absolutely paramount. So we felt we should have a, a native look and feel and a platform specific look and feel because they now want it across Apple, Android, Nokia. So platform specificness is, is very important. And we should assume that there's going to be a big offline use, use case. So we started looking, panicking a little bit, because they weren't able to give us an awful lot of money. But, you know, so we looked at the technology options. And almost immediately, we had to rule out the three native apps approach, because it was just going to be too expensive, or we thought it was going to be too expensive. And we looked at HTML, maybe building an HTML5 app. Funny gap or something, and then something in between. We didn't know what something else in between was. So I'm going to go through some of those technology uh, technology choices, and then see where it takes us. So approach one: HTML. HTML5 is coming, everybody. This year is the year of the Linux desktop. <laughs> Next year, HTML5 is coming. So, the promise. Well, you know what the promise is. You build it once, and everything else comes for free, right? This way for all platforms. And that's good. That's great. But the trouble is the clients, your bosses, my bosses, come up with that thinking, hey, it's cheap. You buy one, and you get everything else free. Who thinks that's right? Okay, everybody else is, well, I suppose everybody else is here listening to me talking about this. <laughs> yeah, there are fundamental problems. The first thing was that it's almost impossible to get to mimic a native app by building in any other technology. I mean, you've got a, a web, web browser and you're building with a JavaScript layer on top and you're 
and then pushing the dom around. Of course, that's not going to be as responsive. Never mind, look as good as native. And this is a fundamental problem. <laughs> different platforms have different navigation metaphors, different you know, widget sets. So uh, you're going to have to build uh, a different UI for a different platform uh, for each different platform you do. And they're never going to be great. So why is that? Okay. Oh, here's another problem. Yeah. WebKit. <laughs> WebKit's everywhere, right? It's on Android, it's on iOS, everywhere. Trouble is, well, the trouble is, is that WebKit has a funny release model. It doesn't have a release cycle. You, so an OEM comes and says, well, let's just take the tip of the trunk, and then we uh, fix the bugs, and then we ship. And that sometimes works. Um, very rare. Um, so you get all these different OEMs, uh, all these different platforms, have different versions of WebKit, which means different browser bugs. So every browser has its set of bugs, and, and you've got multiple browsers, so you have just a multitude of other browser bugs. And of course, in some platforms, there's a, an upgrade path which is very, very fast, and in others, what we were hearing earlier on about everybody stuck on 2.1, 2.2, and 1.6, and 3.0, no. Uh, and, and this is a sort of, uh, these degrade uh, more, some more quickly than others. So this quote, uh, no, no to implementation, so like is uh, from a, a guy who watches these things called Paul Koch. He writes uh, quotes mode. So, lots of work. The developers, yeah, <laughs> I've spent, I've, I've bled. I've bled and I've sweat and trying to fix these things and trying to get absolutely everything right. And the CPU has spent all its time rendering something fake. So, Joe Hewitt, the guy who wrote uh, Firebug, he wrote a thing called scrollability.js, and it's just to get it the scrolling exactly as the iOS uh, intended. David Canada from uh, JP Touch and Blackly Censure, he boasts that he spent three weeks trying to re implement scrolling for, uh, in, in an HTML file, and that's where you get Censure. And FT.com, they re implemented it anyway. So, endless browser bugs. You're going to be building the same, uh, different UIs anyway. And your developers, you, spend more time fixing bugs and less time making the app. So you get less time. Client's not very happy. So this is how we look at it. Clients, clients come to you with HTML5, and they want HTML5 because it's cheap. And they love writing the checks, but they hate the quality. They get it, and they try and jab it, and swipe, and scroll, and lift, and whatever, and it's just not good enough. So they hate the quality. So, there must be something else, right? So remember that square from earlier on? So, HTML, let's just say the HTML UI just isn't there yet. Maybe, maybe in a couple of years' time, maybe next year. Oh, it is next year, right? <laughs> and native's too expensive. So, this other quadrant here, what's going on there? Let's have a look. That's a, a native UI and Web logic. Okay, let's see. So, this is how uh, normal apps are built, well, architected. So, you have a presentation layer and an application layer, and it's a standard end tier uh, application layer. And for a sane developer writing a web app, the uh, curtain phone gap, you might have uh, these, these kind of technologies at, at different places. I quite like Backbone. But what we're looking at is something else, which is, say, the, uh, the UI rendered natively. And let's say, let's write it in JavaScript. That sounds familiar, right? So, who's heard of Titanium? Who's used it? Okay. You like it? No. No. Say so, yes? No. 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 Okay. So, Titanium. The pitch. You write your UI in code. And then you have a runtime which translates it into native. Incredibly interesting 
and clever. Really, really fantastic technology. But, but, there's a but. So, this is the way it does it. You say new, new button, and then the runtime instantiates a button for you, and then you say a set text in JavaScript, and that gets translated into a, uh, a, a native call to that button, and you say set text color, and set background color, and then maybe set kernel or set line length or whatever. And you get so there's lots and lots of messages going from JavaScript up to native. And, and then on the way back, you have on touch down and on touch up, and then on click, because there's on touch up and on touch down, both needed to make an on click, uh, but there might also be on swipe or on uh, scroll or, or whatever. And most of the time, you're only interested in what the, the JavaScript is only interested in one particular event, which might be the on click or the on tap. And so this ends up with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of traffic between the <coughs> JavaScript and the native. So, um, and what you found, find is that the responsiveness um, of the Titanium map is just not quite there. Almost there, but really clever, but not quite there. And where you have a real problem is for list, list views or <laughs> IOPS, UI table view controllers, and they're very difficult to get right because you're constantly hitting this uh, Java, uh, JavaScript native bridge, and it's getting really uh, difficult to, to get, keep it responsive. And you're at a big risk of memory days. Mm. So, this is fundamental. In addition, no UI tooling. So, no UI tooling is all very well if you're used to building swing apps, right? <laughs> okay, so it seems very natural. But Android and, and iOS uh, provide some very good tooling. So, this uh, Layout, uh, the layout editors and uh, all the amazing things that Tor Norby and his team does uh, to uh, Google to uh, build the ADT. Um, and then on the iOS side, faceless and nameless people, unfortunately I can't credit them. Um, at Apple doing things like Interface Builder, which uh, has its fans and has its detractors. And also no runtime tools. So that's all the resource selection stuff. So have you got a, an LDPI, or HTPI, or a large screen or, or whatever? Um, and uh, this is a similar story on the uh, on the iOS, which is things like: um, is it a retina display? Is it uh, an ordinary display? So, um, so you have to duplicate all that, and you have to build that all stuff in, in um, Titanium, or uh, it's quite difficult to use. But no, you like tooling. Problems don't stop there. Uh, the porting by the framework. This is a lesser problem. So. Um, the, the, the porting, you know, the, the, the framework makes its own choice about where it sticks everything. So um, you build to a lead, lead platform and it's, uh, you make your iOS and, uh, app look lovely and then you end up putting it onto an Android and it doesn't look so good. So you end up having to build the second UI and the third UI all by itself. And also, you end up, if you're doing anything which is not supported by the, the, the API, then you end up building, building native plugins, which is great. You can use plugins, that's great. So, that's not the only thing that's doing, uh, doing this sort of thing. We've got a couple of, uh, of examples of um, game libraries which are using the uh, OpenGL, um, and they're essentially putting HTML5 Canvas APIs to attract the web developers to come and uh, write OpenGL code. So this is incredibly clever because yeah, the web developers don't need to know anything about OpenGL, but they get the benefits, the performance benefits. And they see a sort of 5x uh, speed improvement. Um, and here are some examples. This is a game closure, which is, uh, they're in closed alpha, and they're, uh, they're not advertising the fact that that's what they're doing. They're reading between the lines, or looking at their job posting, that's what they're doing. And, um, impact for files, which is a, um, it's a single platform thing, uh, so it's not good for the problem that we were trying to solve, uh, and it's very expensive, experimental, and was there for one release of impact for iOS. And then AppMobi um, Direct Canvas, which is very, very recent, 
So unfortunately, it wasn't going to help us with uh, the uh, investment project, but this is what they're doing. The, the, is OpenGL back, back in uh, Canvas API. So, unfortunately, because it's Canvas API, we're not getting any of the UI, the, the buttons or the, the tabs or the what, what have you that we, we're actually wanting to build, the native UI. So, this is very much like how the web did things. It was wanting platform specific buttons, and it, there, was a, there was a trend in about 1996 of trying to make uh, the, the buttons look exactly the same as whatever platform it was running on. And by about 1997, everybody agreed it was, we'll just make up our own and make it flow. Make it. And everybody accepted it. It's fine. So, still not good enough for our purposes. And this next criticism is uh, linked to what we were talking about for detaining. And this, this is a fundamental problem with detaining. And, and this other approach. The UI, um, because of that traffic between the uh, IO, uh, between the JavaScript and the native, uh, is so much, it actually, the performance is bound by that traffic and the speed of that traffic. So the, the standard way of approaching this is to bundle your own JavaScript engine. So that's all very well, but unfortunately, it adds about five to, five to eight megabytes your app down. So uh, that's hello world for five megawatts. Okay? Now, who here has got Android uh, apps in the market? Who here has got Android apps that are above half a megawatt? No? About 300k? Okay. I, I bet you have a proportion of comments, and we reckon it's about 10% of commenters, who are asking for, move this to the SD card, please. Or you, and, and you can have five stars then. So, this wasn't acceptable. Kitchen sink for entertaining is 12 megabytes. So, today I want to introduce you to a new platform that we've developed. We've reinvented the wheel. Not a good thing, <laughs> but in the last 20 minutes or so, I hope I've uh, shown you why we've had to reinvent the world. It's called Kiri. It's Japanese for giraffe, but that's incidental. We like the word. <laughs> so, our requirements was that we wanted to make it as cheap as web, right? No, okay. We were going to maximize the code we use. Uh, but more importantly, we wanted really good, fast, native, and platform appropriate UIs. And at Future Platforms, we believe that happy, happy workers are productive workers. So we wanted to have developers who are um, not fixing endless browser bugs, and designers who are not having to compromise their design, and everyone can use the tooling which is appropriate for the platform. And we want to, we didn't set a, a particularly hard limit, but we didn't want to be uh, having five megabytes for a hello world. So you remember this uh, architecture? Here has the presentation layer written in native. So you write your UI in native, and the application logic is in JavaScript, and, and that's the bit that's shared. And then a platform service layer, layer which is written in native, but that's uh, provided by Kirin. Now, consequences of that. The platform, every platform has its own UI, which is built in native, so nobody's going to be complaining about having back buttons at the top of uh, your, uh, your screen, or tabs at the bottom, or anything like that. And Android gets the first class user experience as well as iOS, because everybody builds the iOS one first, right? It annoys the hell out of me too. Everybody gets better tooling. And the designers don't have to worry that, I don't know, Sensor's scroll tab doesn't work or different. We, can, we, we know we can make it work because the, the documentation is great. Okay, so this diagram here, 
we work at the activity level, and we have this bridge called the, uh, the foreign function interface, and the, it's, it's much more layered, so the data is passed up and rendered appropriately, and then you get the application-specific uh, events that the, the application is interested in. So it means much, much more, uh, much fewer, I think, uh, calls between uh, native and, and uh, JavaScript. Um, which this this is a deliberately trivial example for illustration purposes. But if you imagine a set list uh, data method, and then the list view just takes that data and renders that, and you don't have all the back and forth going on, so no jerky lists, easy to do, um, do it right, and it's responsive and not so much uh, memory holes. Consequences of this is we don't have to make it really fast. And so we can ship JavaScript. Well, we just use the JavaScript that's in the web view. We have an invisible web view, we put all the JavaScript in there, and we communicate with the native stuff. Which means that it's tiny, right? We almost don't have to worry anymore about reducing the Hello World uh, app. Uh, I think it's about 80K. But we end up with really good performance. And we wanted to, we knew that we would, after about five minutes of thinking about this, we realized that this was something that we didn't, we could use again and again. We didn't have to use it just for Glastonbury, but we couldn't build everything all at once. So we wanted to make it easy to grow. And we did that two ways. We made it modular and, and we made the, the uh, foreign function interface really easy. And it's just a series of proxies, but you don't need to worry about it. So, don't worry guys, there's only two pages of code. And this is one of them. Now you don't have to read any of this. The only things that you're going to be interested in are the yellow text here. So in the Java, you call the screen proxy, on button click, and this ends up in JavaScript. And in the IELTS, the screen controller, you call on button click. And guess what? It ends up in JavaScript at the same place. Isn't that awesome? Next slide. The next slide is just the reverse. So JavaScript calls out to native. JavaScript doesn't know what it's calling, but Whatever platform you're on just responds in the right way. So set text and size. And uh, who's done IAS development? Who does IAS development? Okay. Cool. So IAS has this um, this named arguments thing, and so you have to name the methods uh, in a similar way. Uh, and the named arguments are uh, separated with colons. And so this is why we get this funny underscore uh, calling. Uh, Name convention. And then we wanted to, we, we were inspired a lot by Node.js. Has anybody come, come across Node.js? Yeah? Okay, so that has super cool, uh, that's all the coolness right now. But it has two things which we liked. First one was uh, CommonJS modules, which is the standard now for service type JavaScript. And um, so that just makes uh, writing modules and classes in separate files and allows great code organization. And it, it comes built in uh, with Node. And that's what we felt we should do for, uh, for Kirin. You can do lots of, you can do modularity lots of ways, but we'll just pick one. Um, and threading, asynchronous events, they call it evented which is um, very similar to how we did it here. Okay. Do you want to see that one? Okay. This is where I might have to put the microphone down. Oh. Let's start with the IELTS first. This is a, an, a simulator for the retina display. And 
we have a very trivial app here. And I'm just going to click here and how big is whatever. Right? We have some rude words, rude names to this, but we're not going to say that now. But we can click, and this is doing round trip. The logic is all in JavaScript, and the UI is native. So we'll, and we just blah, 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 blah. Lots of things, and we go up to, and then we loop round up to biggest. And then we show a list, and this is all proof of concept, which I needed to build this before uh, we could actually proceed and validate that. Right? So this is what we, what we came up with. And this is just a, a very simple list. And you can see the performance is good, and you click. And, and all the data is coming from JavaScript, and all the, the logic of the, the dialog box is coming from JavaScript. So, because we're friends, and this is an Android conference, we thought we would do a bit more, make a bit more of an effort with the Android version. So, and this is a native button, native, completely different UI, it's Android. And we get a bit more, we get bigger and bigger and bigger, because the text gets bigger and bigger. And we get a list, and I'm sorry, this is the emulator, so. And we get toast here, fantastic. So, James, you've just shown us two days of apps. How do I believe you that you've been doing all this stuff that you've been explaining? So, I need to show you that this is actually working as I've been describing. So, we've got all the words going from smallest to biggest. I want a word at the end of biggest. What's that going to be? Just to prove to you that I'm not going to be making things up or this isn't a scripted demo. Gigantic. Gigantic. Good word. Okay, I'm going to put this down so I can type. <laughs> and I'll launch the IRS first because that's the way we did it. You realize we can't, we didn't see any of that. You could have modified the native. <laughs> He's sharp. <laughs> okay. So you didn't believe me. <laughs> yeah. So. Thank you, Glamorous Assistant. <laughs> so, who knows JavaScript? Who knows JavaScript? Can you clarify for me? This is JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with this cube, it's completely ordinary job. <laughs> okay. <coughs> that was a very smooth demo, very carefully scripted, spoiled by the very clever man in the front. This is going to be. What do you think this is going to be? Okay. The next one. Right. If this works, I want a big cheer from everyone.
Okay. Now, I have a confession to make. The guys who built the IOS tried to use Kirin, but hated JavaScript. So this is what they built. This is all Kirin. This is the same code. But we didn't ship that code. But check it out, though. This is the emulator. I can show you on a device. It looks gorgeous. Okay. So we see that this, this works here. And this is the magic. And we have a map. And we have a map here. This one uses toolbars because uh, you know that's the way that uh, Apple likes to do it. And this is an old version of the map. And you see you know, and if you click on these things, you might be able to see, or maybe a lot, there's a lot of uh, time specific logic in, in the left mirror. It needs to have the clock, clock set right. Okay. So you like that? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So let's get back to the presentation. So we shipped three times. IELTS, which was the native only. We built most of the most of it in hearing, but then we jumped in and made it all native because the developers wanted to build it in native. But the Cube and uh, Android we were, were with Kirin. IELTS works with Kirin. So we have IELTS Kirin and we have Android Kirin and we have Cube Kirin. This is what this slide says. These photos in the background show you that some of the 140,000 people there. And this is what happens on a, on a nice year. Most years it just rains. It's very muddy. We had 100,000 downloads, 110,000 downloads. Orange came to us and said, we are targeting 40,000 downloads. So we were very pleased with 100,000. <coughs> we were featured in each of the app stores. So iTunes app store. Uh, Android Marketplace, you know, this is choice, choice stuff. And we had some really nice reviews, and we were watching Twitter, and we saw some people saying, oh, I don't want to uh, uninstall my, my Glastonbury app, and we found it really useful. And the client was really, really, really pleased. And we've won two awards now for this. Okay, so, Steve died, and I wanted to tribute. So this is my one more thing. <laughs> and here it is. We have resourced it. <laughs> so we put it under Apache V2, and it's it's still, you know. We've only built one app and, and had it out in the market. We've built two other cute versions, but and the Android is much more mature than everything else. Um, so we still consider it sort of not finished. It's, it's stable, but not finished. But we're looking for people to come and give it, kick, in, kick in the tires and, and see what it looks like, see whether they like it, see what you need to do, and, and maybe contribute, but you know, Okay. And um, these are the things that are coming up. Cube is already done, but we just need to get it, get it out. So that's me. My, my boss said I could only come here if everybody here followed this Twitter account. <laughs> so I'm going to tell my boss that you're all following this. And please don't make me a laugh. Okay? Okay. That's where the GitHub is, so thank you very much.